Okay, so see my, see my screen now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, hello everyone. This is chapter 21, spreadsheet. We'll talk about spreadsheets. Um, the usage of spreadsheet is, um, we use it everywhere. Um, and let's go into the learning objective. So what we are going to, going to learn is about various ways in which we can get data out of spreadsheets or Google Sheets, like Excel Sheets or uh, Google, um, like Google Sheets that exist from the Google uh, Office. Um, we are going to learn also how to write data from spreadsheets and Google Sheets. So reading and writing from Google Spreadsheets or uh, Excel files. Uh, this is mainly what we are, we're going to focus on. Um, if you if you guys find anything that is not, um, yeah, I think this yeah yeah. Uh, if you find something new, please tell me that because I didn't think this uh, this uh, these slides are updated. So if if you found something that is mentioned in the book but it's not in the slide, please mention it. Um, so yeah, let's go into. So Microsoft Excel, yes, okay, we know this. Um, this is a library, write Excel and re read Excel. Um, this is a prerequisite to, that we will use it to read and write Excel file to Excel files or Excel spreadsheets. Um, also, most of read Excel function Allah allows you to load Excel spreadsheet into R like read, read XLS and read XLSX, also read Excel. This, they, they both have, the three of them have a uh, different formatting in terms of uh, reading from Excel spreadsheets. That's depend on the format. So, and uh, can read files from both. Mainly you could use read Excel to read both XLS and XLSX format. Uh, it guesses for file type based on the input. So this is this one that you, you mainly could use. Um, okay, so let's go into the, this one. So reading from Excel spreadsheets. Now we could use uh, the function read Excel um, to read the file uh, as a tuple, like getting the data from the spreadsheet and assign it to a tuple in R. And this is an example of a spreadsheet where we have a student ID, full, full name, uh, favorite food, and mail, uh, meal, meal plan, and age. Uh, some kind of uh, student um, data. And we want to have it or read it to R using read Excel function. And we just do this with using the, the read Excel function. Uh, we assign it to a tuple. When we like uh, display it, it, you see a tuple here. And also, you know the tuple that it's, uh, it recognizes automatically the, the type of, uh, of the column. So you see here the full name is a character, and the, uh, the, food, the food is a character also. The age here is a character, which is not correct. I think this uh, it should like we should change it now, um, but yeah, it's mainly like assign it a tip uh, Excel sheet or Excel uh, data set or Excel table table is uh, table exists in Excel file into um, a, a table in R. Uh, there are a few things we might want to address in this data set. Uh, the column names are all over the place, yes, and uh, we can provide a column names that follow a consistent format. We recommend snake case where that's using uh, the column name argument. Column name argument is a argument that you uh, provide provided to the read Excel function. And as we see here, uh, the column name function, uh, the column name argument, sorry, uh, is equal to uh, a combination or a, a list, list of the new names that we want to assign it to um, this tuple. 
that we're reading reading it that we're reading it from uh, from Excel. And here is we display it and we see that for the, the new names. Um, now we could skip the first row using the skip argument. If we have a skip uh, the first row, if, if we want to skip the first row, which is uh, like the the old names here, it's just old names. We could use this skip one to just uh, drop out this uh, the first uh, the first row, and we see here that it's dropped out. So we have we just have the new names. Um, dealing with missing data, so when we use um, when we have missing data like in A, this one in a, in the H uh, column, and um, we, we we to deal with it, we can need, deal with it using uh, Excel the Excel function itself, read Excel function itself before we when we provide the, the arguments, we can use the NA, a, NA uh, argument and uh, pass it to uh, a list of, if we find those, this is, those are, um, those are the, um, uh, if you find N in A, just uh, make it like, uh, like assign this empty character instead of NA. So that's that's how we could replace an A, um, and you see it here in the favorite food. We have uh, this this kind of thing that is it's supposed to present uh, an A, um, but it's not like uh, the normal one. So just to us to to get rid of it or replace it, we could use uh, this an A argument to assign or um, uh, or replace an uh, an in slash a with an empty character, uh, which is null. And we see it here that it's turned out to be an a like this one. Um, so yeah, um, we can also specify the column types. Um, the column types here, like I was, I was saying, it should like recognize the column type, but it doesn't recognize it well. So it's just assigned almost every every variable uh, to character almost of the most of them so to just address that and be uh, consistent and specific we could use the same excel function to uh, assign the column types so the first one student id we assign a numeric type and the full full name is a is a character so we assign a text well, favorite ID is a text and meal plan is a text also. Age is numeric. So we have three texts and two, two numeric uh, variables. Um, and we see uh, we see here that the, the numeric um, translated to double here and here and text translated to a character like here and here and here. Um, this introduced us to uh, a new problem in which we need to fix. Um, and this problem, um, I think he, he means that if you assign a text to the already one, the already text one. So we are now we, can, we are trying to, yeah, I think he's he trying to uh, convert a double to a text. And um, Let's see. Yeah. Is this, yeah, this is five. Yeah, okay. so what happens, what happens is um, you change the column from character to double and it changed that five to any can you scroll down yeah yeah can you see it changes that um yeah now you have to you need you use this like you know first you need to detect to change if it is five you ch change it and now the five is now in character and you pass number so passing the age in the five in court it will change it to a number that is pass number yeah so we are changing but 
how how this file gets in it was in a so how it's introduced yeah, yeah go up go up go up go up again go up okay yeah so, can, so, so yeah, originally originally it is five but when you make the column you can see the column there is character but you say okay this column is numeric can let me change it to double but when you change it to double it will change this five to any because uh, you know what i mean yeah it's, it's, it's just, it doesn't recognize it yeah. uh, as um as a double yes uh, so, so it's it transfer it to automatically to any yeah so the thing is they did is you need to change that one individually by trying to look of you know uh, if it is five then you give it you know the uh, change it to five manually yeah so yeah yeah just, uh, just have to be now manually um yeah that's the problem is it's you talked about when we uh not don't anticipate what what could what could happen when uh, a column type is uh is transferred uh with uh with us don't know doing uh don't recognize um the values itself um so yeah here he after he just uh, turn it back to text. Uh, he tried to uh, get rid of this five or replace it with the five, uh, the text five. Then we, when he, um, when, uh, and yeah, it, he also used a parse number to, to convert this five uh, back to uh, double again. We're using mutate. Yeah. So, okay. So let, that's, that's nice. I think I, I got the, um, the main idea. You could like use read Excel to. Uh, I think there is a, a lot of argument also, not just the loss argument, but mainly if you would read a lot of Excel files, uh, this is will be helpful to just uh, like define the the basic prerequisite before you even read the Excel files. Um, so yeah, let's continue. Go to reading worksheets. So an important feature that distinguishes spreadsheets from flat files is the notion of multiple spread, multiple sheets. And you could see it here in, uh, in the bottom in Excel. Uh, we all know this, um, like, uh, like the tab, multiple tabs, multiple spreadsheets, and you could like move data between those spreadsheets uh, using uh, formats or uh, formulas, some type of formulas. And uh, you can read a single worksheet from a spreadsheet with uh, the sheet argument read Excel in read Excel. Uh, the default, which we have been relying on, uh, on up uh, until now, uh, is the first sheet. So basically, you say that we can we just reading the first um, the first sheet, which is uh, to Turgersin Island, I think uh, this one. This is the first sheet. The, the second one is some like doesn't really see it, but uh, I think it's uh, something. It's, it's another island. Um, but yeah, let's see what he said. So it's he said that some variables that appear to uh, to contain numerical data are read uh, in as a character due to the character uh, string NA not being recognized as a true NA. So he, that's that we that we uh, what we talked about before. He doesn't recognize in a, um, like, is a correct the numerical if if um, if the if, if it's numerical data are reading as a, a character due to their character string in a, uh, it's, it doesn't recognize it as an in a uh, type. Um, so here he said that. When we assign an A, it 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 basically replace all um, the N A uh, character string with the character or the um, the N A character, right? I think. Let's see. Here. Yeah, it's the same. So. Doesn't why it is when he does when he tried to to 
to replace it because it exists. It doesn't. Oh yeah. So here we is transferred to a double. Here it is transferred all of them as a double when we use this NA. So I think this N if if we yeah yeah I I got it. So if you have um, columns that is mainly you see it as a as a double or a, as a number as a numeric value. So if you have this like those we have here all numeric value, but it's suddenly we have like uh, in a uh, rows like records that have in a in in them. Uh, it it does uh, it's uh, to to convert them to double. You have to make it uh, at this, with using the same function read Excel. You have to tell the read read Excel to that there is an N A, which is called uh, N A. This have as an N A character. This N A yeah, like you define it or you you make it recognize where how is uh, how it should proceed. In a values uh, to 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 just recognize to make it recognize it uh, to to make it uh, recognize automatically what is the real type of uh, of the variable or or uh, the column itself. So when we use this na equal na, we tell it like okay, so this na now is a is a non-value, but the the column itself is a is all of them are are numeric so i will train turn it or transfer it to uh double that's how it uh that's how i see it at least um yeah so alternatively instead of using that we could we can use uh, excel sheets to get information on all worksheets in excel spreadsheets and then read the ones uh you are interested in so mainly Instead of just uh, like specifying the sheet itself inside the Excel um, or the tab itself it's inside Excel, you read all of them at once. Then we then uh, uh, you can uh, just read one of them after it. And once you know the names of the worksheets, you can read them in individually. Um, Oh yeah, so Excel sheets it just get you yeah it, just, it doesn't read the name the read all the sheets it just gets the names of it, of them just for you to to be able for example to make a for loop and iterate over those names and make it make them uh like make the read Excel function read them one after another at least this is how I understand it. And um, there is a function called dem, which is a, it says that, um, you, it makes uh, makes you avail like uh, it's I think it's, it's called uh, it's uh, it's a four dimensions, and you see it's uh, the row and the columns, number of row and number of columns like a matrix something like that. So in the in uh, in penguins Tor to Torgerson. Uh, so this is the first one, I think. Yeah, this is what this one. In this one, we have uh, twenty four. Yeah, twenty five. Uh, twenty five and eight eight columns. Twenty five rows and uh, eight columns, and we, you see it here. So same with penguin uh, Bisqu biscuit and penguin dream. So you just use dimension to to know the the dimensions or the 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 number of columns, the number of rows uh, of uh, a spreadsheet uh, or a tuple. We 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 basically transfer it here as a tuple. So we're just using this uh, to a tuple. And yeah, we can put them together with bind rows. Like this is how I see it. Uh, like if you, yeah, yeah, just you, to, just to, uh, sorry, yeah. just to, I mean, you know, you notice that uh, the, 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 they, they, even though they are the number of rows are uh, different, but they have the same number of columns, right? Yeah, is you have the same number of columns. The content, unless... the content is different, you know. Huh? The content maybe in each one of them, right? 
Uh, yeah, might yeah. be different, but but the column number uh, numbers are the same. So it yes. could be that uh, I mean the variables are the same. Yeah, yeah. Could be. I think this, uh, yeah, I think they they make it like uh, uh, like most of them are having the same column to to be able to make a union afterward. Oh, sure, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, something like that, and the rows basically it's it depend on the data itself so that's why the rows um, uh, is different so yeah it's, it's uh, i think to to be able to i think to, to be able to use this it should be have the same number of columns at least this is how i see it because how you could um aggregate or like append functions or, or append um, tuples uh, we know this, I think, to append table, you have to be the same number of columns. So here, I think that it has to be the same number of columns uh, to be able to uh, uh, append them together. So bind rows here, uh, but he didn't say that. I, I don't know why it's, he didn't say that uh, as a prerequisite, you have to be the same number of columns, but uh, we know them now. So uh, bind rows, it, it just um abend all uh, all the three tuple uh one after another um and you see here if if you uh if you sum up the the number of rows of all of them you will come up with 344 um in chapter 14 we'll talk about ways of doing this sort of task uh, this sort of task without repetitive code i think he's, he's talking about the um, what in chapter? Yeah, iteration. It's it's talking about the for loop and this guy while loop. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's what I was saying uh, at the yeah. beginning. So, yeah, reading part of a, of a sheet. So, basically, when if you have a sheet with this kind of messy messiness in it, and you just have you just want to read the table inside. So this spreadsheet is one of the example spreadsheet provided in the read Excel package. We can use the read Excel example function to locate spreadsheets on your system. Yeah, it's existing in your system when you uh, when you um, uh, what is called install the package, uh, the read the read Excel package. So to to just know it, where where is them, where are they, you we use the read Excel example. And um, yeah, this is a this your pass, and we now we use when we get the the, the pass, we, we can use the read Excel function to read it from the pass itself. And yeah, so what what is how is this? Uh, I don't know what is this. Is it saying um, new names? Is this how is he see new names? I don't know. Uh, I don't understand what is what is he saying here. So, but this, when he displayed this, that this is a tuple now, and he have like six column. And oh yeah, I think I I started to get it. Oh yeah, yeah, I got it. So he say here that there is no um. Since there is no names to the column at the sheet, we don't see here any column names uh, at the first row. Um, so we can instead assign it to um, other, but I don't know how he doing it like this. I think he, he just explained that there is no, uh, this should be, ha should be have new names because there is no uh, column names, uh, but yeah. Uh I think it's uh, you know looking at this the this the spreadsheet the first uh, the like the first three four rows you know they are sort of not in a in a sort of uh, like a order so they are just not what we want so maybe that is what uh, represents to this uh, characters um, yeah. no, I'm, I'm thinking something like that yeah so here we when we see the tuple uh, we can see that. In the first row, simply cannot resist writing. Is is um, we don't see it. 
So what is it? He didn't see it. Okay, so the managing, I have to see it. <laughs> so I don't see the, um, the first row. Okay. And just, okay. So basically it just says that if you read it that way, you will read also um, all the row. So you have to like clean up a bit because you are reading uh, uh, column by column. So you see all this messy stuff, you should, you should read it uh, in, the, in your tipple. Here we have a uh, simple cannot resist at or, and then we begin to have uh, the table that, that, that you see here, name, progression, uh, profession and age. Um, then also in A, in A, which is empty saying, here is the data we want to read in, uh, in start in the cell A5, which is this one, A5. Um, the name here started, this, the table, it started here and ends with uh, the cell F515. Uh, in spreadsheet not notation, this is uh, A5, yes. Uh, this is how we uh, select the table itself which we supply to the range of, uh, of the range argument. So yeah, this, this, this is kind of useful. So if you, if you just know where is the cell that have contains your information, we could, you could just use the range uh, argument to, to read them. Here, you just uh, apply the, the same way we selecting in the Excel formulas. You, we could use uh, the Excel uh, formula here and you, you just select this portion or part of uh, the spreadsheet. Um, yeah, so let's go to the second one. So let's talk about the data types. In CSV files, all values are strings. So it doesn't matter if uh, it doesn't recognize this, um, them as a, as a Boolean or as a number, uh, all values are strings. This is, this is not particularly true to the data, but it is simple. Everything is a string. The, the underlying data in Excel spreadsheet is more complex. Uh, a cell can be um, a cell can be uh, one of four things. A boolean. So he he now he is distinguishing between uh, CSV and spreadsheets, uh, Excel spreadsheets. CSV files doesn't doesn't recognize recognizing recognized um, uh, a data type, but in a spreadsheet Excel spreadsheet uh, it does recognize them. So a cell can be one of four things, a boolean, a number, a date time, and a text string. And these are an example of each one of those. Um, what does that mean in CSV files, all values are string? What does this mean? Like, I don't understand, like you can have a CSV like with a column. Um, yeah, he, 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 um, he mentioning that the file itself, when you open it in Excel, Excel doesn't recognize types in CSV files but okay. it recognizes files in spreadsheets files. Spreadsheet okay. files is X, uh, XSLS files. This is spreadsheets uh, formats. But CSV, it doesn't recognize because he it's comma separated values. So basically it's, uh, it's like strings that um, okay. separated with just commas. So okay. that's how we understand it. Um, yeah, so Let's go to writing to Excel. So now we we have we can write. So we see that we can read using uh, a couple of functions. Now let's see how, if if you can write write to, to uh, an Excel files if we already have a data in in R. Um, so here he he uh, he signed I assigned the big cell tipple, which is a tipple of items. Uh, with which is type of factor, uh, brownie, cupcake, and cookie, and some quantities of each, each one of uh, those type of bakes or uh, cakes, and um, yeah, the sales so the sale of uh, each one of them. This is the quantity and the item itself. So normal like uh, assigning normal uh, tipple. Now we we know we want to. Uh, write it to an Excel file. 
or um, an Excel spreadsheet, we use uh, write XLSX to uh, function to just as we, we assign it to the, we give it two argument. First argument is uh, the table itself. The second argument is the pass where we want to save them. And if we open it, this is how the data looks in Excel. Same as you write it in Excel. So now we go to the X, um, just like reading from a CSV, information on data types is lost. Um, when we read the data backend, this makes Excel files unreliable for caching a uh, term, a term, yeah, a term uh, results as well. For alternatives, see section eight, I think section eight uh, five. What is this? Is this is like importing data? I don't see. Okay. So yeah, he, he come back to the the the, the data import chapter. Uh, he mentioned here that we have a write CSV uh, function that we could use to uh, instead of uh, this uh, um, write XLSV XLX uh, X um, function if we want to have a, a, a CSV file. So here, again, distinguishing between the spreadsheets and CSV with different functions. Um, yeah. And, and he says, he, he say, he say his, here is uh, as, um, if we read, him, read them back, we try to read it back as Excel file itself or the, the spreadsheet itself again, uh, it recognizes the um, uh, the values, but in but if we use uh, uh, the CSV function, the one that we saw we saw in the chapter eight, uh, it will not recognize it. As we said before, uh, he he just uh, he, he just read it as a string in CSV files, so uh, it it doesn't uh, re uh, define the the data type itself. So that's that's how you distinguishing here. Um, okay, so the right X, Excel package is a lightweight solution for writing formatted output. Okay, so the formatted output. What is the formatted output? The right Excel package is a lightweight solution for writing a simple Excel spreadsheet. But if you are interested in additional feature like writing to sheets within a spreadsheet and styling you will want to use uh, the open XL X S X package. And I hear about this package before. Uh, it's a, you can, can basically do anything that you can do in Excel uh, manually. You can automate it using this package, uh, using uh, the R, uh, R. And I think they, it has also some like similar package in Python, something, something like that. Um, and I use it before, but I don't remember its name. Well, that's, uh, I mean, that's interesting, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of the, and I think people now interested in how, uh, uh, if we know programming, how we could translate this, uh, this inf or automate more stuff than just using the same old uh, way way of doing Excel spreadsheets. Uh, that's how. That's why basically they. Uh, the producing this kind of packages just to automate your workflow more and make your analysis easier. Um, yeah, so we won't we won't go into the details freezing this package here, but we recommend reading it. Okay, so this this is uh, the link for it. Now, Google Spreadsheet is another widely used spreadsheet program included. It's a free web base, just like uh, with Excel in, in Google Spreadsheet that are organized in worksheets, also called sheets uh, inside the spreadsheet files. It, uh, okay. Now we have a, another library that make, make us a, uh, able to uh, manipulate Google Spreadsheets, which is Google Sheets 4. This this is the name of the library um, and uh, sheets 
it uses a Sheets API version 4 to provide an R interface to Google Sheets. Yeah, same name. So let's continue getting started. The main function of Google Sheet 4 package is read sheet, which reads the uh, Google Sheet from a URL file ID. So if you if you have a file in Google Sheet, since Google Sheet is not an application like Excel, mainly it's 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 mainly in the web um, web interface or web application like contained in the in your uh, Google account you can access it. So to share it, you yeah you can share it with a URL. You can use also this URL, the same URL, to read it here using. Um, this function, read sheet, uh, which read it a sheet, a Google sheet from a URL or a file ID. This file also goes by the name read, uh, range read. The function, this function, yeah, this function also goes by the name range uh, read. So same function, I think, same uh, usage. You can also create a, new, a brand new sheet with uh, GS4, G, uh, Google Sheet 4 create, or write an ex, uh, to an existing sheet with sheet write and create a brand new sheet. So create is creating new, writing is uh, like appending or uh, uh, to an existing one, something like that. And let's see if we say here, yeah. So reading from the Google spreadsheet, we the first argument to the read sheet function to be able to read from Google uh, Sheets is the URL. So if you have the URL itself, you have a sheet in the somewhere in the web uh, in your uh, Google account, and you're using uh, Google's uh, spread, uh, Google's uh, Sheets to uh, manipulate some type of data, uh, you can use um, you share like share the link, something like sharing the link, uh, and get the link itself. When you get the link, you can put it here inside uh, a variable and pass this variable to the read, read sheet function, uh, read sheet function, and it's just it will just will connect to the Google the Google uh, the Google API, Google Sheet API, and will uh, download it for you. Yeah, and transfer it to a tuple, I think. Uh, here, there's other arguments, same as um, uh, the read Excel function that we talked about before. Same thing, exactly the same thing. Uh, call names is to define the, the names of the columns. The escape one, if you want to drop the first row. The NA, if we want to replace other, uh, like, um, replace the NA values with an empty characters, then we uh, uh, the, the R read it as NA, uh, and then the column types. And uh, note that we, we define the column types a bit differently. Yes, we can see it here that we don't, um, we don't try, uh, write it as a C like this one, combine, combine this or uh, define it as a list. And we say num numeric text like we used we used to do before. Now it's a bit differently. You uh, we use short codes. For example, DCCC stand for double for D character for character. All of those C's are characters. So this is how we could use uh, the read sheet function. Okay. So same thing with. Um, the read sheet, if you want to specify a worksheet inside the, the Google Sheet, you use the sheet argument, same as we say we seen before. Okay, so and you see we we use sheet names, we can obtain the list, same thing uh, using the sheet names. And um, yeah, it's, it's basically the same. Also, you can use the, the range argument to select a portion of the sheet, same as uh, the read Excel function, of course. Um, let's go to into writing. So we can write from R to Google Sheets uh, with write sheet. The first argument is, uh, is the data for, uh, frame 
to write. And, and the second argument is the name uh, or other identifier of the Google Sheet to write to. Here we see that we assign the desk tipple to the write sheet. And yeah, that's it. I think it doesn't uh, like providing an example. While we read from public Google Sheet without authenticating with your Google account, reading a private sheet or writing uh, to a sheet require authentication so that Google Sheets 4 uh, can view and manage your Google Sheet. You can check uh, the Google Sheet Vignity. Vignity, or saying on how to set up your account in R. So basically, you are trying to authenticate if if you have some kind of uh, private um, sheets. You can you want to uh, access you have access to it. You have to authenticate to be able to do that using this uh, this this. Uh, I think it's a it's, it's a function is. Um, is it like, yeah, it's it's a couple of functions that exist in uh, Google Sheet 4, right? Yeah. So this is GS4, D authenticate. And if you don't need to access private sheet, use Google Sheet authenticate just, just to, to indic indicate there is no need for a token. And yeah, it's interesting. You can, you can do a lot of uh, like um, security aspect here using this uh, function. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go back to, yeah, I think I have to. Okay, so now, yeah, I think we've, we have finished now. It's just some, um, some exercise. We can go through a, the exercise uh, afterward, but mainly uh, there is no, the uh, Microsoft Excel and Google Sheet are two of the most popular spreadsheet system. Being able to interact with data stored in Excel and Google Sheet file directly from R is superpower. And you can see this a lot in nowadays when um, a couple of uh, your colleagues are still using spreadsheet to do some stuff. And you could automate uh, those kind of tasks using R or any programming language, to be honest. It's, you just, the idea of automation is superpower itself in itself. And um, you can also have some kind of, uh, if you go like with your imagination, you can use like something like Shiny to have some kind of interfaces and with just a click of a button or something, you in behind the scene, you read from spreadsheet, you uh, construct a table, you're doing some calculations, statistical analysis behind the scene and having some model training at the same, at the same time, all this behind the scene and you just get the final result in, uh, in the user, in a user interface in Shiny. So that's how powerful that could be. You could use this function, set of function or set of libraries to interact with Excel behind the scene, and the interfaces you just um, you just like a web uh, website. So yeah, uh, I hope this is uh, this was helpful, and I think it's uh, it in itself uh, it's 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 really a superpower to use uh, this kind of functionality to. Uh, uh, in, in Excel and uh, Google Sheets with R. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank so you, you very much. Any, do you have any uh, questions about uh, this chapter? I think it's it, in itself, the chapter is simple, but um, it will be more useful if we are uh, doing some exercises. And I think that's why the exercise section here is pretty good. And uh, I didn't do it, but I, I will do it for sure with R and Python to just uh, get, uh, get our hands dirty a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting. You know, it, 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 it covers a lot of things, you know, and it's, 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 it's quite clear, you know, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot.
So I I do a couple of, of sheets that I download from Google Sheet and work on them. But now from now on, I will just be using the Google Sheet, you know, packet to just call them and do whatsoever from there instead of for me to download them for us. Um, yeah, even yeah. today I did that to download some Google Sheet and work with them. On yeah. the, we, yeah. all, we all are like this. I, I think Thank we are just lazy a lot <laughs> to, yeah, just, I... to, and to, to search for... Yeah. Yeah, something easier, but um, but the power of programming is automation. That's how I see it all the time. If you if you can automate, if you can see a manual task that it sure ha has to be automated uh, to optimize your time and be more efficient. So, yeah, let's let me like pause the share and let's. Stop sharing. Okay, thank you, Ahmad.